Hey Pixels, welcome back to part two in our two part tutorial series on how to design a cosmetic product label and product scene in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension. In part two, we're going to build a 3D scene for our cosmetic products. I like to think that we're doing a mini photo shoot for our products. Think product photography. As always, feel free to follow along because remember, practice makes Excel pixel perfect. You can even use this as a photo on your future cosmetic product website. In Adobe Dimension, we're going to make the artboards 1080 by 1080 pixels. That way it can be easily shared on social media or your online portfolio. It's totally up to you. Throughout this tutorial, I will be alternating between the orbit, pan, and dolly tools to navigate the scene camera. Keep an eye out on the right hand panel if you would like to see detailed properties as I'm building the scene. Lastly, the top bar will have the camera views and a render preview for when we're close to rendering the final scene. Now that the artboard is set up, let's begin building our scene. Since we're basically designing a photo for our cosmetic products, I like to start by placing the actual cosmetic bottle on the scene. And this is going to sort of be a reference and a way to compare sizing of, you know, different objects we're going to put on the scene. So everything will be relative to the size of the bottle. So I am going to where it says models, scroll down and look for squeeze tube. And there we go. We have our squeeze tubes. So I'm going to put two on the scene because we have two different body washes. All right, so we have our bottles on the scene. Now we can add everything else, all the different shapes um, to set up our scene. Where it says basic shapes, I'm going to grab a plane. So with this selected, I'm going to hold down shift and scale it on the X axis like so. So I'm gonna hold down option shift and I am going to rotate on X axis and that essentially duplicated our floor panel or plane and created a wall. So now that we have our wall, I wanna make sure it's sitting right on the ground. So where it says actions, I'm just going to select move to ground. And then I'm gonna position it so it's perpendicular with the floor. So I know this might look ridiculously big, but this just gives us a lot of room to angle our camera when we're getting ready to take photos of our product and just play around with this scene. So we just want as much freedom and room to do that as possible with our wall setup. Okay, so we have our wall set up. Now we can play around with some abstract shapes. Just makes our scene look really fun and visually interesting. So now we're going to add some really fun abstract shapes to our scene. So I am going to grab this Taurus shape and I'm going to place it on the scene. And I am going to modify this so it looks thinner and it's positioned a lot differently than as it is now. So I am going to select it and let's rotate this. I'm going to move it up like so. And I'm just going to go to the Taurus properties and where it says pipe radius, I'm just going to reduce this to zero points or let's make it one centimeter. There we go. So I am going to now shrink it down. So I'm just going to reduce the ring radius. Now that we have our first Taurus on the scene, I'm actually going to grab another Taurus. So with this selected, I mean, we can hit the Taurus and it'll put it on our scene, but I like to just hold down option and drag it out to duplicate it. And 
then I'm just going to hit shift on my keyboard while hitting the scale and just increase its size like so. And I want to actually defy the laws of science and I am going to actually place it inside of the ground. <laughs> And I'm just going to increase its size like so. And I want to reduce the radius to 0.5 centimeters. And let's move this behind our tubes. So I'm gonna grab this sphere shape and I'm just gonna shrink it down. And I want it to look like it's just suspended in the air. So again, I'm just going to hold down option on my keyboard and I'm going to place it on the other side, but this time let's make it a little higher. Okay, so we have our spheres on the scene, we have our rings on the scene. Um, all that's left to do is to add a really, really small pedestal for the bottle on the left hand side here. So I'm just going to grab a cylinder and I am going to flatten this right on down. So let's go to the cylinder properties and where it says height, let's just reduce that. Now I am going to zoom in and I want to make sure that the bottle is sitting flat on top of our pedestal. I want to make it seem like the bottle, this right hand bottle is sort of leaning. I'm just going to hit rotate on its set axis. Okay, we have our shapes on our scene. This looks so good. All we need to do now is add some materials to all the, sh the objects on our scene and then we can add some color. Now let's add materials to our objects. So in the starter assets panel, we want to filter by material. Let's start with the background. So I want our background wall and our floor to be matte. So I'm going to grab the matte material and drag it onto the background wall. And I'll do the same for the floor. So now if we go to our scene and we look for our layer, so in this case, it was the two planes we can see that we have this material applied to it. Now, I want the rings to be metal. For the spheres, I want them to be plastic. I also want the bottles to be plastic. Last but not least is this pedestal. I really like how light oak looks. And that's all the materials that we need to add to our scene. So now this is the fun part. To add color to the different shapes and objects on our scene, it's really easy. So all you need to do is select the specific shape that you want to apply color too. So in this case, let's select the wall. And right in the actions panel, there is a select material icon. So we can just click that. And then it's going to bring us to the actual object, you know, all the properties and materials that are applied to it. So right where it says properties and base color. So if we click this base color, it's going to open up a color picker and we can add our hex code or we can, you know, drag around this color picker and pick a color. So for the sake of this tutorial, I already know all the colors that I want, all, you know, all the shapes to be. For the scene, I want the wall to be a nice light pink. You guys know pink is my favorite color. 
and I'm gonna apply the same color to the floor. And because this is metal, we don't need to apply color to that, so we're just gonna leave that alone. But the spheres, I do want to color them. So I want this sphere to be green. And I want this sphere to be pink. Let's first select the actual caps for the squeeze tube. Again, in the scene layers where it says squeeze tube, we can choose from the body or the lid. So in this case, let's choose the lid and we can hit that arrow and it's gonna go into all the properties for the lid and let's color it white. And we'll do the same thing for this squeeze tube. Okay, so we colored all of the objects. All we need to do is apply our actual labels. So if you recall in part one of this tutorial, we added our label and our gradient backgrounds to our Creative Cloud library. So in Adobe Dimension, we can actually open up our Creative Cloud library and grab those assets. So I'm going to select starter assets and I already have my shower gel label library open. And as you can see, we have our gorgeous labels. So all we need to do is just drag and drop them onto the squeeze tube body. So let's grab our first green and place it on the body. Play around with the sizing. So I'm just going to make it bigger. And I am going to grab our second gradient and put it on this bottle. And now that we have our gradients on our bottles, we can add our labels. Our scene is almost done. It looks so good. So what I like to do when I'm really close to rendering, cause we're pretty much there, is I like to turn on render preview just to get a sense of what the scene is going to look like um, without actually going through the whole render process. So right at the top here, I'm just going to turn on render preview. Right now it looks so good. The only thing I'm concerned with is the lighting is really, really bright, maybe too bright. Um, so I want to play around with the lighting just to get one that isn't as bright as it is right now. And I'm going to switch back to starter assets and where it says filter by, I'm going to select lights. Now we have a bunch of different environment lights to choose from. So I am going to just select a few and see which one that looks best. Um, the only thing I want to do is I actually want to apply focus blur to this scene. In the scene panel, I'm going to select camera. And now we have all the camera properties. So we can adjust the field of view, the position, but we also have an option to adjust the focus. So I'm going to hit this toggle or this switch and I'm going to turn it on and now we can set a focus point. So I'm going to select that and I'm just going to click where I want there, where I want the focus point to be. And then I can just play around with the blur amount and it's going to blur everything that is not within this focus point. So as you can see, it looks like the ring and the sphere are too close to the focus point or the foreground. We want it more in the background like these two shapes so that there's more of a blur applied to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the shapes and just push them back. 
So I'm gonna just go back to the camera and I wanna make sure the focus is set to, let's set it to 10. Gonna hit render preview to preview what we just did. This looks so good. I hope you can see what I'm seeing. Oh my God, I love it. This looks so good, so, so good. I'm gonna save time. I don't wanna show you the whole render process, but essentially to render an image, once you're happy with it, all you need to do is just switch from design to render mode. And then you can, you know, rename your file. You can choose what quality you want, and you can also export it as a PSD or a PNG. And of course you can adjust the file path where you save your file and then you can just hit render and you will see your final rendered image. But I'm not going to do that for this tutorial because that's going to take forever and my MacBook Pro might just explode. Now, just one extra, extra tip. You can actually bookmark different camera views. So to do that, all you need to do is select this camera bookmarks here you can open that up and if you hit the plus icon here you're going to save a view you can change it so let's say front let's say i want a really unique angle so maybe from the side or something and let me just kind of zoom in Like something like that. I can just open camera bookmarks, just type inside and so on and so forth. And then if I hit render, I can choose from, you know, the front, only render the front view or only the side or all of them, which is really neat. So just a, just a little tip for when you're rendering your scene. But all in all, this looks so good. That's how you design a super stylish 3D scene for your cosmetic product. Don't forget to use the hashtag ExcelPixelPerfect on social media to share your designs with me. I'll see you in the next tutorial.